Hey guys, today let's talk about waking up to the real you. Have you discerned that you've fallen asleep in any way to who you really are, to your real potential, to your real dreams, to being present in the moment? I know I have in my life and the Enneagram has helped me to wake up to myself, to see my unconscious patterns and how I've just been going through life in the way I have learned to manage since I was a child very young most everything i was doing in my present moment i could see my little self doing it as well and how i survive things i walk through and how i begin to see the world um the longings of my heart that began in childhood the things i believed when i was young um i could see in my adult life i still was living those same patterns those habitual unconscious patterns out so yeah, the Enneagram is incredible for this very reason, to begin to discern your own coping strategies, your own way of living, the lens that you've been looking through, um, and to see how that lens is actually a, a fog, a state of being a zombie almost, of living asleep in a waking sleep, walking around, just letting the patterns play out and not really living life to the fullest. So something that's been incredible for me is in learning the Enneagram and coming to a point to actually discern my personality type within this system, I began to startlingly so see myself very clearly. And it's helped me to be conscious of when I am falling asleep again into these patterns and I'm able to wake up and catch myself and make new decisions and yeah my life has changed a lot since um knowing my enneagram type and walking this out so today let's talk about it i'm going to talk about waking up to the real you how do we fall asleep and how do we begin to wake up what does that look like um starting out i'm going to show you this book this book is incredible the enneagram guide to waking up by Beatrice Chestnut and Uranio Pais. They describe um, this waking sleep very well. And I'm going to actually quote a decent amount from the book because I believe it's a great intro in understanding the Enneagram to begin with. But um, a core thing that I'll get into further um, in this series is that we have three centers of intelligence just as humans. We have our head center, our heart center and our body center and out of the Enneagram nine types, this is the Enneagram symbol up here. Um, out of the nine types, three of them are in each of those three centers. So uh, five, six, and seven are in the head center, two, three, and four are in the heart center and one, eight, and nine are in the body or gut center. Um, so, all of the nine types have fallen asleep into those centers and are over dependent or over relying on um, that particular process. The head center, they're very analytical and in their minds and are planning and they're concerned with um, managing their fear or anxiety and creating certainty or security for themselves. The heart center, um, our two, threes, and fours, they are very in touch with their emotions, uh, their feelings, they're uh, processing life through their, fe their feelings and are managing the emotion of shame and identity and self-image and self-worth and trying to answer who am I while exploring the world of emotion and connection and things like that. And then types uh, one, eight, and nine, they're in the body center, the gut center. They're very in touch with their instinctual uh, instincts um, and setting boundaries. And they're managing the core emotion of anger underneath and um, are focused on justice and truth and what's right and what's wrong and things of that nature. So, um, yeah, all of these types are managing these core emotions of fear, shame, and anger in their own ways and um, have kind of fallen asleep into these patterns and um, are processing the world through that center of intelligence um, and have an imbalance is the best way to say it, that we're all imbalanced 
have an overdependence in these areas. So yeah, that is an aspect that really is a core thing when we get into learning the actual types and seeing how they've fallen asleep in those areas or how um, they're trying to navigate life in that way. Um, but yeah, from there, I'm going to read just about waking up and how to do it, how to confront the ego and, uh, what childhood looks like. So, all right. Some quotes from the book, Beatrice Chestnut. Each of us is unique and endowed with great potential, but we exist in a kind of waking sleep because of our early childhood programming in order for us to grow and change to develop our ability to make more conscious choices we first need to know how we truly operate in the present to become all that we can be we must start where we are and know where to and know exactly where and who we are one of our deepest unconscious patterns is the false belief that we already know ourselves well enough to understand why we think feel and act the way we do I will argue, I will argue that in fact, we don't and thinking that we do know who we are is part of the problem in order to to know ourselves and evolve in positive ways. We first need to see that we essentially operate in a kind of waking sleep without conscious effort. We function to a large degree mechanically, according to our habitual patterns, as we go about our everyday lives over time early and necessary and sometimes life-saving uh, defensive maneuvers and coping strategies evolve into patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving. These patterns come to operate like organizing principles or beliefs about how the world works and how we must act in order to survive and thrive. These pattern coping strategies turn into invisible automatic patterns that influence where your attention goes and what adaptive strategies you employ to interact with the world. Each of us automatically adopts um, specific strategies to defend ourselves against threats. And these strategies work together to make us the organizing principles of our personalities. To wake up from the state, we must confront the ego as well as the shadow cast by the ego. We need to become aware of of the automatic patterns that structure our defensive ego persona, as well as all that remains unconscious in us connected to our ego's need to protect itself. This self-protective persona keeps us focused on its needs and prevents us from feeling pain or joy, condemning us to a kind of waking sleep in which we don't know who we are and what's possible for us. Over time, we start to equate all of who we are with the ego, creating a kind of false self or persona. We each come into the world as a unique and authentic self. As dependent children, however, we adapt to our environment. We find ingenious ways to navigate through life using coping strategies um, that determine to which of the nine personality types we belong. But you and your personality are not the same. Our personalities help us survive childhood, but limit our conscious awareness of all that we can be in adulthood. Slowly over time, our need to survive in the world causes us to develop false selves that stands in place of our true selves. And the further we get from childhood, the more our true selves are obscured by the defensive patterns we adopt. We become trapped in these invisible, habitual patterns, and it becomes difficult to grow beyond them as they become more deeply ingrained. So this is a very description of the dilemma that most of humanity truly is in. And waking up truthfully doesn't happen unless you consciously choose to embark on a path like this. This path is not easy. It's possible, but it's, it's uncomfortable, but it's so, so worth it. As I said in my last video, um, this is so necessary because all joy, all life, quality of life 
exist in living as our whole self and waking up from these false pursuits, I think is the best way to say it. Um, each type has a vice that um, they have a tendency to find themselves in the clutches of very easily. And um, it's a form of bondage to say it kind of plainly. Um, it can feel like swimming upstream to go against these patterns because they're that deeply ingrained. But as they start to break, it's literally chains breaking off of us. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to exploring the Enneagram more and more because it is the most freeing system I have found in my time of typology searching um, and understanding the ego, understanding the psyche, the soul, all of that. Um, the Enneagram is the most freeing journey one can take. Um, once you can see that you have been asleep, being awake is what we're meant for. We are born to live awake with life flowing through us with infinite potential, limitless, um, possibilities for what we can become, what we can create, what we can do. And, um, Waking up is highly described in this beautiful, beautiful diagram right here. This is Enneagram. Ennea means nine. Gram is drawing. It's the Greek words. So a drawing of nine. And health is all listed in this and how the numbers interconnect with each other. And I'll explore that in later videos. And, um... The Enneagram is just a wealth of knowledge, a very accurate typology and how to wake up, how to see your patterns and love yourself as you see them, understand them. It will really bring a lot of clarity to your life thus far and point a very clear path and where to go next and what awake looks like for your type. So... Yeah, that is the most important thing you can do for yourself is to take the time to see yourself, to, to be able to see your whole self and to keep looking into gazing into the real you and calling her forward, calling him forward to live, um, committed to the birthing of the real you a movie that comes to mind that i highly recommend is called the eternals um it describes essentially the scene where this uh celestial is to be born but he's on the inside of the earth and like the highest like god of the universe's plan is to bring this like being alive but in order for it to be born, earth has to die because it's living on the, in the core of it. So as it comes to life, earth starts to split apart. That movie, um, how it's set up, no one actually wants that to happen because, yeah, the plot story is very much connected to the people walking on the earth. But it's, a, it's an amazing picture of the, um, the false self and the true self. And, um, yeah, this journey is worth taking for the true you to wake up from its sleep, to be birth for all of this other stuff to fall off and for you to see the beauty that's really in your type when it's awake. The Enneagram types aren't all something negative. Um, but you get to discern what those gifts that you have look like in health. And, uh, yeah, it's so much better. Um, since learning my type, which is, uh, Enneagram two wing three, and I'll explore that the terminology in a later video, the wings essentially is the neighboring types. So a two can have a one wing or a three wing. And I lean more towards a two, three, two wing three. 
So yeah, since learning my type, it has helped me. I recognize these things all of the time and I'm able to make different choices. I'm able to live not defined by it, not to bow to that stuff anymore. I'm not bound to it. So yeah, I hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you for your time and uh, stay tuned for more videos on the Enneagram and getting into all of the types and making sense of even more of this knowledge. Um, another book I recommend, I love throwing out books just because I'm learning of them and man, they're really good. Personality Types by um, Don Richard Rizzo and Russ Hudson. Very, very good description of all of the levels of health. That's what I love it. It's so descriptive. Um, the Enneagram is of all of the types. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one. Take care.